Meet the Kennedys at Lasseter's Hall at the Waterhole. A cup of tea at Harold Sonia's nursery for a stroll. It's time to neighbors. CJ Kate and Bea. Let's get the neighbors. Hello, welcome to Neighbours. This is the Neighbours Recap Podcast. We have a chat, usually about the most recent episodes of Neighbours, the Aussie soap that just aired. But Neighbours is on hiatus at the moment. We're all like having a nice, nice little detox. But uh, I'm lucky enough today to be joined by three excellent women. We have, I'll go around the table. We have Carly Finlay, who's a writer, speaker, appearance activist. Mm -hmm. And you host your own podcast as well. Yes. Our refreshments provided mm -hmm. and we have kate hood actor Hi. writer director recently appeared as maxine on neighbors i did and sansia sansia robinson also writer director producer actor i love how we all have like five thousand credits so we are so <laughs> slashies <laughs> imagine those slackers that only do one thing i know <laughs> and sansia appeared in 2013 as elaine lawson on neighbors so you two are my first in the flesh, Neighbours alum to appear on Neighbours. Mm, wow. wow. I feel very privileged we've, there. We've had yeah, a couple on the a... phone, but remotely, but not. Not in the flesh. No. Oh, wow. Amazing. But I feel very lucky. Thank you for asking us. <laughs> oh, it's so great. And we're going to have a chat about all things Neighbours, but also uh, about casting, diversity in casting, our wish list of what Yay. we would want to happen mm -hmm. on telly. But firstly, I might go, just again go around and ask what everyone's history, backstory is with Neighbours. So whoever wants to, Carly maybe. Yeah, so I grew up in Albury and we didn't get Channel 10 until I was about maybe 12. So I didn't watch Neighbours until about then, about 1992, 93. So I probably started watching when Toadie and Carl Kennedy came. Great era. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I used to watch Neighbours and Home and Away, and I've dropped Home and Away, and I watch, Same. Yeah. I watch Neighbours all the time. I love it, and even my husband, when he's out, he'll tell me, "What will happen on Neighbours tonight? What's happened?" And he'll be really annoyed if I don't watch it. I yell at my partner because he doesn't want to watch Neighbours with me, <laughs> and he, yeah, he's not involved. So I'm like, "Why can't you be more like other people's husbands?" <laughs> <laughs> I'll get Adam to talk to him. Yeah. Okay, um, I've got to go back thirty years because. Wow. Um, Neighbours came into Channel 10 when Channel 7 gave it the bum's rush. Yes. And it came into Channel 10 when I was out there shooting Prisoner. Wow. In 1986. In the Nunawading lot there. Absolutely. Which is, coincidentally, where Neighbours is now filmed. Yeah. They've taken over that building and it's now become Global Studios. So, you know, it's a renaissance for me because being back in that building was like coming home in a way. Mm. <laughs> Quite weird. None of Wadding's a strange place to call home too. So. <laughs> yeah, very, very odd place. And I like that also you've just probably taught our UK listeners the expression bums rush. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain? <laughs> Bums rush. Oh, well, a Channel 7 rejected Neighbours. <laughs> they, they didn't think it was going to be a paying concern, I imagine. But they were very wrong about that, yeah. weren't they? Big mistake, huge. Big mistake. Yeah. Well, and then Channel 10 gave it the bums rush by sticking it over on Channel 11. Exactly. Which has, I think, been a big hindrance yeah. to its success in recent years in Australia. In yeah. the UK, it's fine. Doesn't, there's no worry. And Sans? Me? I... I've always really loved Neighbours, always really loved it. I go through sporadic phases where I'll watch it really obsessively and then just realise that I don't have time to watch television and I'll just stop watching television and Neighbours goes out and then I get back into and it. the great thing is you don't need to, you can just pick back up where you left off. I didn't want to say that, but that is completely true. But that's the beauty of soap. Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. it is. Um, but I love Neighbours and then got a role. Like I, I am a producer. I've been a television producer, like on the sitting on the other side, what, for 20 years? So it was really, and very weirdly, oh, this is the truth, my best friend died. And one of the things when she died, she said, I really want you to act again. Oh, wow. And out of nowhere, I got back to Australia and my agent called and said, neighbours want to see you for a role. I'm like, 
Top move, mate. <laughs> and see, that's um, people who, who remember when Dad Cop died, his dying wish to Drab on the show was look after my wife. Mm-hmm. And Drab kind of took that literally and yeah. then he, now he's married laws. So you've got to be careful on your deathbed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what you say to people. Because everyone's listening. They run yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and now, well, elephant in the room, your character, Sansia Elaine, was in a wheelchair. She was quadriplegic. Yep. And Kate plays Maxine, who's in a wheelchair. But unlike Sansia, Kate is actually in a wheelchair. Correct. And so I, I, I thought I'd, you know, bring you guys together just so we could talk about both sides of the coin. Well, I think this is a really interesting mm. thing to be doing because I really feel that things are changing in our industry and... Um, the conversation is beginning to happen and so I think it's a fantastic thing that we're actually talking about all that that entails Mm -hmm. what does it mean you know who can act and who can't act who can dance who can't dance you know who can who can write who can produce who can direct Mm. all those questions are really coming up now because the industry is really looking at diversifying and I mean Sansia and I were just talking about this a few minutes ago, you know, the, the need for the entertainment industry to bring diverse people in front of the camera and on stage. Mm-hmm. You know. And I think it collides with the fact that in the past, you know, there were only white people running things and yeah. they were mainly men. Mm. And now the world's really changing yes. that people of other colours and people of other, mm. you know, ethnicities have got a lot of power. And because they've yeah. been minorities, they're not noticing stuff like a white male or a white, white you know, a, a, a person that can, you know, is it fully able? Is it? I'm so conscious of saying the wrong thing around. And you I, know, language is part a, of it. Language yeah. is a really funny thing, isn't mm-hmm. it, Carly? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's mm. it's kind of like in Australia we say people with disability. In the UK they say disabled people. Uh-huh. Mm. I right. say I use a mixture. Yeah, yeah. me too. Do you? Carly? Yeah. I mean, it's. I, I think that the most important thing is to agree that people are going to make mistakes yeah, that's very generous and that it's not their fault yeah and that we just have to get on with it in mm. some way yeah you know mm. and and we all make mistakes yeah and it doesn't come from a place of malice it's just not at all we're trying to learn and yep and i was furiously googling before turning on the microphones just your bios to make sure i i use the words that you use to describe yourselves well, thank and, you and <laughs> yeah and yeah. also that's not hard to do and but also it's still just making taking that step and i know carly when you when you found out kate was cast as maxine you were really excited yeah I was. to see a yeah, person with a disability represented as the actor and the character yeah an actually disabled person because so mm. many times yeah and well I, like when i, I for yeah. me i was playing a quad clearly yeah but it, it really should have gone to someone that really knew more about the experience than myself. Well, I mean, you see, the thing is that the industry has not really grappled with the idea that it's possible to have disabled actors. It just sort of hasn't done that yet. It, we're, we're, in the, we're in process. Mm. So all this stuff is up for grabs as far as mm. I'm concerned. And I think yeah. it's so important that as actors we talk to one another about it and we actually have, you know, free and wide-ranging conversations Mm. so that we nobody ends up pointing the finger and blaming people and doing Mm. all of that you know I mean I've got a million questions myself because for me can a person with MS play a person with cerebral palsy Mm. Mm. and yeah also as with actors it's in Australia it's such a tiny industry it's a tiny tiny industry and there's not that many roles and the phone and there's not that many series in production all year round so when the phone rings for actors I imagine a lot don't have the luxury to suddenly go I'm gonna make a stand here and I'm not accepting this person in a, this character in a wheelchair um, to make a point mm. whereas I think the, the bare minimum might be just to at least ask actors to think about that before taking the role well for me I mean, I, I was saying to somebody the other day, if it's not okay for indigeneity, then it's probably not okay for disability. Yeah, yeah, so, you yeah. know, if you're not going to black up, well, yeah, then, yeah. you know, you're not going to creep up kind of thing. That's, yeah, that's... no, I considered it really strongly. Like, I, in the, so far as I thought, well, I wouldn't do this if someone's asked me to be an Indian. So yeah. what am I doing? And neighbours were really open to that conversation. And I did take the role. So I guess I, I probably should be feeling a lot more guilty than I... No, but that I can't take back. But now in retrospect, my trip has been suddenly going, 
Yeah, I really could have interrogated it more. So, well, my apologies. A- actually, well, you know, I mean, thank you for saying that. But I, my my position on it is this: I think that um, we are in process, and I think the conversation is just beginning to happen. And so, of course, there will be millions of actors. Well, not millions, but you know, there'll be Maybe a lot of actors them. who've who've crept up in the past who probably wouldn't do it in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. As there were actors who blacked up in the past mm. and didn't do it and beyond a certain point. But it, you as, like you said, it was really clear to me I, I would never change my skin colour. So, yeah, yeah, as I said, I really mean it. I wish I'd done a different thing. Yeah. And Carly, some of the writing you did I enjoyed about the movie Me Before You. Mm. The So the... Um. <laughs> we went and protested it. Um, there was a, um, a an able-bodied actor playing a disabled man that was going to and, and did kill himself because of um, his disability. So they portrayed disability as a tragedy. So a bunch of us, they would call ourselves the Crip Army, <laughs> and we um, we went and protested outside Village Road show, Village Cinema in Paran. Where is it? Yeah, Paran. Yeah. And we had all the like some security turned up. It's quite funny. we you know I'm I'm not in a wheelchair but we had other people in wheelchairs and motor scooters and stuff and, and so we weren't really going to cause a huge riot but we had the media there it was great to get our arguments out there that mm. disability is not a tragedy and it's really important that um you know representation matters that you know the representation of disability and representation by disability matters i know for me um and i'm not an actor but so many times you know at least once a month i get a call or an email or an instagram message from a producer of an exploitative show oh. asking me to come on their show. Well, like what sort of show? Um, similar to Embarrassing Bodies. Oh, yeah. So, um, right. you know, a lot of people say to me, oh, I saw your, your skin condition on Embarrassing Bodies and I, I just, you know, I've lost friends over it when I've said I don't want to watch it because no. it's so exploitative. And they're like, well, how can you have an opinion on it? I said, this is my condition being yeah. represented. I'm going to have an opinion on it. Um, a few weeks after I got married this year, there was a um, man that contacted me that wanted to do a show and I thought it sounded quite interesting. We had a Skype interview and he just didn't get it. Like he just, he was so um, focused on disability as a tragedy. And he actually asked, like after the, after the interview, he said to me, I've got a question about your wedding. I said, all oh, right. Okay. I thought he might ask me about the dress. Where'd you get your flowers? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, he said, um, what does intercourse feel like? <gasps> and I said, are, are you serious? And, mm. and, and I had nowhere to go because he, like, I, I just shut down the Skype window because I didn't know where he was from. Like, I don't know who, what company he represented. And I said, you've sat here the whole time thinking that when I've talked to you about the social model of disability, Stella's, Stella Young's good work, cripping up, all of that stuff. And he asked me that. And it's like, he's, he's so intrusive and exploitative and, and that's a, you know, a, a depiction of the, that kind of media mm. that he he feels the right so all of these it, representation really does matter because he's seeing these people on yeah. tv and he wants to cast them in his own programs so audiences can think oh what how does sex feel like for yeah. carly people want to know so therefore we have the right to mm. in be invasive in that way yeah I just don't even <laughs> I don't even know I, I just yeah. wow yeah it's stunning isn't it mm. it's but, absolutely yeah. stunning the 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 I mean I call call it the aversion of gaze it's people mm. you can give oh. certain people information mm. and they just simply do not take mm. it in no. they just look the other way and there are I find in my life that there are some people who can take on a conversation about disability to a large degree and other people that you can have a conversation which glances over it mm. and I think it's so great that neighbors is even bringing these discussions up and oh, really yeah. and yeah and i often give them a hard time because i often can see them vis- visibly ticking the boxes i give them a hard time about their diversity and casting like they had an indian family who barely lasted a year mm. and were written out unceremoniously and often i see extras people of color cast as extras and i get so infuriated i'm like gee thanks for throwing us everyone a bone mm. with by ticking that box and, and, and filling that yeah, role. But couldn't you have given them a line? Couldn't you have put them in your main credits as a as a main character? Yeah. And what about when um I don't know what I don't know what you call her, but I would call a pedo teacher. Except I've got more issues with Angus's issues with consent than Jody's oh, advances I, as a teacher. But <laughs> no, maybe it wasn't even her. Maybe it was Paige. Anyway, sorry, Jody couldn't. Um, so she she just mentioned like tr- a trans person like yeah, in, right. and I thought that was really interesting that it was just in conversation that they they're even just trying mm. to bring in that kind of awareness through conversation. And, and I know that I, I, yeah. I just want to say one thing about Elaine. 
uh, playing, that was the character I yeah. played. She was an amazing human. They made sure that she was really, she was really funny. And she I was really strong, and like the, really. And I remember, she, Sancia, when you, when you got the role uh, at the time, at the time, um, you were really conscious. You were talking to the makeup department about how she puts on lipstick and cause they were almost going to do a comical take on that and yeah. make the lipstick go on mm. badly. And, and that was the only the makeup. Everyone else was incredible around it. Like, yeah. but even the fact that there was a dialogue about that, I think is I amazing. That. And you said, no, give the woman some dignity. She's going to have normal lipstick. So was there oh. an assumption that she wouldn't want to look good because she's disabled? Or that she wouldn't be able to put on a makeup properly. Mm. And so she would put it on badly. Mm. Okay. Oh no, no, it wasn't that. It was that the nurses wouldn't put it on well. I, I remember oh. kind of following the thought, but I was like, this woman is seriously cool. She supported, mm. her, uh, 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 she's been a single mother. She just gave no Fs. Yeah. She really didn't. Like she was really fantastic to play because I'm so neurotic. Yeah. <laughs> but actually sitting in her body was, I was like, she just doesn't care. Like she's just, she's, she was genuinely curious, really strong. And she just called BS on it. I loved her so much. And I, I remember she wasn't worried about, Re she was, with uh, Kate, my co-host, called him Hot Doc. She, was, you were Hot Doc's mum, yep. and you were more concerned with how he couldn't. His life wasn't in order. You're yeah, like, mate, yeah. what are you doing? Who and was that was Hot all Doc? in the writing. Reese Lawson, Reese. So mm -hmm. I sort of he was this hot doctor That's who it, really. no one mm -hmm. liked, and so I kind of got brought in to give him some sympathy, <laughs> and with a tragic backstory. Yeah, so that he made him look good. But she was just a really great mum, and yeah. she was a single mum. The partner had left, and the partner came back. Yeah, I kind of wished that I was more like her. I don't know. She was very still because I had to be so still. She slowed me down. Yeah, I completely. And very weirdly too, um, my mum had a stroke the day that I started playing her. So my mum was paralysed. That's unbelievable. So wow. my mum wow. is really, I look exactly, my mum's, she died. Um, I really look like my mum in it. I look quite different from me. Like when I look at it, someone showed me that the other day and I'm like, Geez, I look like my mum. Yeah, and then when the very last scene where Reese died and I was with this, I've forgotten. Um, Dr. Carl? No. No, I can't remember. It was the young actress. Oh, golly. Oh. What's her name? She was, was it Vanessa? Old. No. Vanessa. I loved Vanessa. Yeah. Um, I love Vanessa too. She was mm. great, wasn't she? Yeah. But mm. also I remember that not only did they, um, did, did they put you in a wheelchair, but they aged you up. They, yeah. You were playing quite an older woman as well. Yeah. Yeah, there was two layers going on there. I know. I mean, for me, weirdly, I stopped acting. I the reason I stopped acting, I wrote a play. I, I'd had eating disorders for twelve years, so I had anorexia. I wrote a play that Sydney Theatre Company produced, and I went around the world. And it kind of, it was not a very good experience. I didn't understand that it, it was compelling because I was unwell. So it, it was not a very safe thing to do psychologically to be unwell and say you're unwell and do it. It was a comedy. Weirdly, I wrote it with Wendy Harmer. So I ended up having massive panic attacks and it was a disaster for me. And I stopped acting after that. I just hated acting. So pretty much I hadn't acted then properly for a very, very long time. And I loved the fact that I came back as someone who'd been so self-conscious about their body, full of here I was with, the body was just completely irrelevant yeah. to my, I was just an actor. It was and like the we, irony. Yeah, was, and we were rehearsing and you had, we had, to, you had to keep reminding yourself that you could only move your head. Like it was really restricting. Really, yeah. And another thing I noticed too, just how people behaved around, like, you know, people very, very respectful. <laughs> I don't know it was whether, I don't, I think people, I chose not to move when I, not because I'm a method actor, it just felt simpler. She breathed differently. Um, I'm so, anyway, it was a really, it was a very powerful experience to be someone who didn't move for someone who doesn't understand did, that privilege. Did you talk to people that are quadriplegics or paraplegics when yes. you? Yes. Yeah. And I, I think it made me a bit of a bad actor doing that because I was so terrified of doing it wrong that I didn't mm. know how to, that's the research is just research. And I think as an actor, people are probably terrified of doing it wrong anyway. Completely. <laughs> yeah. Really terrified. Oh of, yeah. And yeah. I think, would you have been the same if you had to play a quadriplegic? Absolutely. Like, uh -huh. Absolutely. Because it's not my experience. Yeah. So it would be, um, I mean, it's not like putting on an Irish accent. No, you know, you, you, this is the, <laughs> stuff the stakes that are you, different. The stakes are different. The stakes yeah. are completely different, and um, you know, knowing what the backstory is when you've got a disability is um, an in incredibly important element mm. in the creation of a character who's disabled. Mm. Too. You, 
Do you worry about the reaction from the disabled community? Because I know when, when you came on as Maxine and I felt, and I was I was really supportive of you and then I, my tweets were a bit, oh, they're making her a bit of a, a dull bludger or a, um, a crook, which I feel that stereotypes disability and maybe that's the only, you know, the only bit I've seen of it. But I felt really worried about criticising when we've got this great opportunity for you, but I was still mindful of the, of the cast of the character and the stereotype well i mean i'm a character <laughs> yeah you know, like maxine is a character I and know. She, she's a wrong and and she's yep. the mother of jacka of and, a wrong you know yeah. he's a wrong one too yeah. and you know i i just had a lot of fun playing yeah it. i wondered whether you would find it harder with the reaction from the disabled people or from able bots no 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 I mean, I, you know, you play a character and you you play the character, and if people don't like the character, well, that's yeah. fine. Firstly, I love that they gave you a punchline within I, the first I, sentence. Yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just that knocking back tinnies. Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I might be good. in a wheelchair, but I can still knock them back. Amazing. <laughs> Come on, love. Cause they, cause they, gave, <laughs> they gave your character emphysema as well, so you had that layer. I know. <laughs> and, and I was, it immediately started making me think about, because they put you in the off-air bar or the Blazing Saddles, headquarters and I started thinking well at least they've got good wheelchair access at the <laughs> at Blaze and then Drab arranged a meeting with you twice in one day at Blaze and I thought he's made that poor woman trek twice out to his place of work can't he find a more neutral ground that she can get to <laughs> twice in one day it makes you think more about the logistics of you know <laughs> you don't just take it for face value well I mean there was also a line in the very first episode um where Paul Robinson sort of says, oh, oh, you're, oh, right, Maxine, nice to see you. Um, Oh, I didn't realise, you know, your condition. And Maxine says, well, I would have been here sooner, but, you know, the taxi, <laughs> if the taxi had wheelchair facilities. I love that. <laughs> which is sort of true, but us wheelies, all, we all know that taxis don't have wheelchair facilities. Right. We all have our own taxi drivers and we call them directly and they come and pick Interesting. us up. Interesting. So th that's a little detail that, you know, no, the writers at Neighbours... Yeah, they got that one with me. Did they? they yeah, I mean, they stunned me how <laughs> they... Just about the Neighbours set, they are incredible. Like, they, they ruin whinging, you know, because they work <laughs> so oh, yeah. hard mm. and everyone is so kind to each other. It kind of blew my mind because I come from a background similar to theirs, like professionally in where there's a bit of whinging sometimes <laughs> under conditions that are pretty great. Yeah, television. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and yeah. so going out there where they're doing six shows a week and they really, really try to get it right. And I often feel quite guilty because I'm a hard taskmaster. I, I can't suspend disbelief. I watch soap and I know it's soap and I know the medium, but I still expect everything to make sense and everything to feel like it could logically happen. Yeah. And when they do nail it, they nail it. When I see them nail it, I want them to nail it all the time. So I, I appreciate that they're banging out six steps a week and they 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 go in and they've got two takes to cry and laugh and do all that hard stuff. Um, yeah, so I do I don't take enough time to go mad props guys, you're you're doing amazing stuff that people are movie sets yeah, they do be able to they do. Really do. And I've gotta say, they you know, being out there was an amazing experience yeah. for me. I like in television you really get looked after. Yeah. And they were so concerned um, about access issues with me. They got me out there early. They walked me through every set that I was going to be on oh. um, so that I could work out if I, you know, what the access issues were, whether I was going to be comfortable or not. And they paid for a buddy for me the entire time that I was there. Fantastic. What so did the buddy do? The body, the buddy, the body, the buddy. <laughs> Uh, the buddy passed me the fork in the canteen, got my breakfast for me, opened the doors, Fantastic. Um, held my handbag, you know, ran through lines with me. It was and great. Whereas a lot of productions would probably just say, well, no, we're not, we don't have the budget for that. We'll cast an able-bodied actor mm. and they can sit down and away they go. Because, mm. I mean, when mm. you're disabled, it's about fitting into the timing of things. And um, you, when you've got like half an hour or 40 minutes for breakfast, you know that you've got to be done and ready and on set mm. at the end of that and ready to go. Um, and b because I'm in a wheelchair, I, I need somebody to get the breakfast for me because mm. I can't reach it. And so somebody's got to be allocated to do that. And I've got, you know, I spend my life waiting for people to be available mm. to do things. And so, 
you know, I was really concerned that I was not going to time in with everybody else. And that would have been probably challenging for you, Kate, coming from a background as an able-bodied actor, yep. transitioning into an actor in a wheelchair. Yeah. When you've done things a certain way your whole life. Mm. Absolutely. And I knew about it because I'd done Prisoner all those years <laughs> in 1847. You know? <laughs> um, so I, I knew what the what the machine was that, that I was a part of mm. out at Neighbours and I knew the importance of sticking to schedule and completing that scene in, in 15 minutes or whatever the allocated time is, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's incredibly important that, that people fit in. You've got to fit in. Yeah, I, I was thinking, I just did something for the ABC, which I can't quite talk about yet, but I was really unwell and I, I said to them, is it all right if I get a taxi voucher? And all the time when I do my own freelancing stuff, it's always me making my own way there, me undercharging, and I didn't get paid for it, but I you know, messaged them and said, this will really make me happy and it, it'll be easier for yeah. me. And they were straight onto it. They're like, yep, no problem, that's fine. And someone you know, came with the voucher when I arrived and then you know, he gave me a voucher on the way back. It was just great. And I, I do feel like that where the entertainment industry can turn the corner now, we're turning mm. the corner and not have uh, performers apologise mm. for their circumstances. Exactly. Mm, and so much we apologise. Oh, sorry, we're late. Sorry, yeah. we need this. Yeah. Mm. And I, one example I wanted to bring up today was Glee because obviously they had one of their main cast was a character in a wheelchair played by an able-bodied actor. And they even had a, an episode where he had a dream sequence where he could walk and dance and... I guess, be normal, quote unquote. <laughs> and then what I found amazing was I used to watch a show called The Glee Project, which was a reality show where they cast actors into Glee, like they mm -hmm. auditioned for a role on Glee. And that show was far more accurately representative of a diverse community than Glee itself mm. because they got real actors in wheelchairs. They got um, plus size actors. They got um, you know actors with diverse sexualities coming into audition. And it, they kind of fell down because they ended up picking just the, you know, straight, conventionally attractive white kid mm. to be the, to win a couple of times. But however, they did cast, um, you know, a plus size gay person of colour who played a singer who would uh, dr dress in trans and perform in, like as a woman. And so they do, they do hit some marks, but there was one girl who I really loved called Ali Stroker, who was in a wheelchair and had a beautiful singing voice. And she was, she didn't win, but she came close. And I kind of followed her career o over the years. And she actually ended up becoming the first, the first, I think, person with a disability on Broadway. To, wow. Because she, they, they cast her in Spring Awakening. And I think that was the performance of Spring Awakening where they had deaf actors and they had an Auslan interpreter. It was an amazing production. Wow. And so I was so happy. I was so sad that she didn't win that Glee role because I'm like, you could, mm. you're doing absolutely everything mm. and you're in a wheelchair and in, you could, that arty character does, doesn't do much as much for the community as you could. Mm. She mm. could have replaced him. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But I, I love that even that small step paved the way for something bigger yeah. to happen in yep. theatre. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I wrote an article last year on um, reality TV when the lady from My Kitchen Rules, I think, was deaf. Um, and I surveyed a whole heap of people to say, you know, can you think of people in reality TV that are disabled? And there were so many more representations of, you know, real life disability situations, actually disabled people in reality TV. I used to look at MasterChef, and even yeah. though that's clearly not about disability, but they had race down better than SBS mm. because it was just not even an issue. Mm. It's like, if you win, you're in, that's it. And so of course it was incredibly diverse, but it was never, it was never a selling point or a talking mm. point. It's, it's incidental casting. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I've got to say this, it's about the human condition and the variance of the human condition. Mm. I mean, 20% of the population of Australia live with a disability mm. of some form mm. or another. So, I mean, you, that, that's not even talking about transgender or LGBTIQ issues or indigenous. Well, di different ethnicities, yeah. Mm. Different ethnicities, all of that stuff. Mm. We have such a diverse community in Australia. Mm. And we really need to grapple with this thing that, you know, the, the, the homogenised version of humanity that we see on our televisions and stages is not real. It's actually not representative of what's out there. Mm. And that's why I hold neighbours to account often because they take their baby steps and I give them their, their accolades when they do, but take bigger steps. Yeah. Mm. Take bigger steps. I think they're starting to. Yeah. And I think that it's for them, it's as much about um, 
the way audiences see what they do mm. as doing what they do. I mean, I think they're Huge very, I think they're sensitive. very, very aware of, of making change and they're doing mm. that gradually. And I know that, I know one of the writers who is gay and was very passionate about one of the gay storylines he was a part of and they take it very personally when they're writing that material. Mm. And I love that. And I wish there was a disabled person in the writing room. Yes. Uh, that's what I wish. Kate, yeah. <laughs> can you take Hello. one Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have offered myself. You should just do, a, I mean, just do a submission. It, you know. I mean, it, I say that uh, having been rejected seven times from the script submission <laughs> process, but <laughs> give it a crack. Yep. Yep. Do it. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I actually really think that it needs to happen in production meetings. It needs to happen in writing rooms. Definitely. It needs to happen from uh, a director's point mm. of view. We need to be seeing, you know, the people who make the decisions about what is going to be seen mm. need to be making different decisions. Now. Mm. Yeah. And I come at it as, well, obviously the feminist angle, like I'm often one yeah. of the only women in a ma male writer's room. Yep. And every day you walk in with your game face on because you feel like I can't let my guard down because suddenly I'm the only woman in the room that hasn't performed today or, or I'm representative of mm. where, whether or not they bring in a female writer next time they do this. And I mean, that to me, that is an extraordinary thing. Mm. It's 2016. Mm. Well, you know, we're heading into 2017 at the rate of knots. And, um, and still we're having a conversation about this. Still, the Diversity yeah. Committee at Actors' Equity is talking about issues for women in the industry. Yeah. And I find that astonishing. Mm. I really do. And actually, I was going to ask probably all of you, but Carly in particular, does it get exhausting? Being the, being the activist. So someone said to me yesterday, Carly, there's this really ableist meme on Facebook. And I said, well, what are you going to do about it? And, and, they, and they're like, well, I don't know. And I said, well, you can call it out. You do it. Like, yeah. I'm really tired. I've spent this whole week calling out these tag and mate memes to the point where I've lost friends. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I feel like I'm constantly saying something. You know, I, every night on the when I watch a project, because I watch Neighbours and then mm. half of the project. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm like... <clears throat> you said like wheelchair bound and then so I'll tweet them you said wheelchair bound you could say and then I'll send them my workplace's guidelines to reporting on disability mm. and then when they get it right I'm like yeah well done the project I'm like yeah really great Carrie said this tonight and you know yeah. they'll, they'll favorite it or they'll say thanks um it, it is tiring and and I feel more people can step up like yeah. non-disabled people can step up because I'm tired absolutely it's, it's kind of like white ribbon day you oh. know we, we've got the blokes involved <laughs> yeah about domestic violence well we need to get a able-bodied people involved yeah. about disability as yep. well. We need to, you know, be, we need to horizontalise everything and make yeah. everything on the same level yeah. yep. so that we all talk about it and mm. have conversations And, and Sansia, I know when we talked about this interview today, you said you were a bit freaked out. You were like, I should never have played Elaine <laughs> <laughs> because there's so much more awareness now of yeah. casting. Yeah, I mean, just full stop for me. Um, I also don't didn't understand a lot about race. I've been working in Blackfellow Films and then for SBS, and yeah, I feel a lot of shame about shows that I've cast that I've accidentally whitewashed. Without I, my thing was about looks, not putting on people that were good looking. That was my obsession, <laughs> you know. And or you can't age. fight every battle at once. No, but I wasn't actually really. <laughs> my frequency wasn't tuned in on it. Like I was pretty determined around age and specs and specs, and as I said, look, and that they just didn't have to be full of really pretty, yeah, and you know, and lots of women, but. I wish I wish I could take back and put introduce more Vietnamese people and 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 actually make an effort to understand Vietnamese music. But yeah. the other thing about casting is that it's you're really really busy. Like that's the other yeah. really annoying thing. And it's I'm ashamed to say that, but you kind of just do the next right thing because you're so conscious of going. Let's just book like because you're doing two shows a week. Yeah, that you don't really have a lot of time to go. How am I going to be correct and, in here? And if if you're a casting agent and you've got a list of 10 websites that you've dealt with, that agencies that you've dealt with, and there's not a, a, a diverse person in that in the, on the books that you can call in for that role. It's extra work for you to then mm. go and seek out those people yeah. that aren't represented where you deal with. But and it then, is a job and I regret it. You know, I really mm. do. And I work hard now. You know, I really do. My mm. work is a lot more disciplined. But it's, it's just, I just, yeah, I find it interesting because it, I can't imagine an actor just, it's must be turning down a role must be, just not in your vocabulary as an actor. Well, it's not, but we do. I do turn it. down, you know, roles that require us to black up. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely right. Yeah. Not and a around voiceovers, I won't do any voiceover ads for you know alcohol, gambling. Actually, you're right. I did. Dieting. I did a bit of voice work in my past, and I refused to do one about um, 
what's the one where they penis ads? I won't actually name check them now. Yeah, the penis, the penis <laughs> augmentation <laughs> ads. I refused. I'm like, I'm not going to take advantage of some poor blokes low self-esteem mm. in that area to mm. make a 50 bucks or whatever you're paying me you know when you're talking about like making a decision not to do something because it's you no know, culturally wrong i was watching and it was such such an awful movie sorry but i was watching um how to be single last sorry, week sorry not sorry it, take your guilty pleasure yeah. wherever you no no, no 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 I, I wasn't like i just wanted to watch something like because i've been cool. listening to hard stuff you that's know. how i watch, yeah. I watch neighbors every yeah, day yeah exactly and you know so i was watching that and i actually fell asleep through it because it was really not not <laughs> great but rebel wilson um said two really ableist things in the space of like a minute she said that she was dating an albino an albino rather and a midget she said the word midget um not short statured person and i tweeted and i, and I said you know why why can't you have the option one to opt out of saying that no i'm not saying that and mm. two the writers just don't write it they because yeah. what i find is so much disability is the last thought so um of like not and i don't like the word politically correct but it's the last thought of political correctness so yeah. you know we, we've done with being racist and homophobic but we can still make ableist jokes mm. absolutely look in my in my ideal world there would be no need mm. for the word disability because yeah. we would just be people all living together and we would be people of different different backgrounds transgender and people you know we'd all just be people every it's experience is so complex my mum's got rheumatoid arthritis and has a uh, disabled sticker on her car mm -hmm. and she's constantly getting dirty looks mm -hmm. because she steps out of her car with no walking stick no wheelchair but she can't walk 50 meters without being in pain but people mm -hmm. don't see that and mm -hmm. everyone's got a different Invisible yeah. disability yeah. would be yeah. so hard. So mm. it's – and mm, my really. experience, like I've got a neurological disorder, Tourette syndrome, which is often portrayed as a punchline on mm. mainstream media. Mm. And I go back and forth. I'm torn between being so re grateful that it's represented at all. And I remember growing up, one of my first um, – encounters with it represented was Travis McMahon on Good Guys, Bad Guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I could, I can't really watch it because it kind of sets my ticks off. I can't really watch a lot of stuff with Tourette's. I can't watch documentaries or anything. But I was so happy that it was mentioned. And he doesn't have Tourette's, that actor. But when I met him, I worked with him on Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. And I met him in one of the first things I said to him was, oh my God, you played a character with Tourette's and I've got Tourette's. And I think he was a little bit bold over. Like, I don't think he could <laughs> take all of that on. But I was so grateful that he had done it mm. so part of me it's it's hard to say we should only cast people in that role that experience that exact thing but by the same token mm. um i would want to see someone with tourette's oh actually i do there are there was a web series i watched and the actor had tourette's mm. not the character didn't but he had to control. sort of work on getting his tics under control before he went on camera mm. and then there's a movie called phoebe in wonderland with Elle fanning and the little girl's got tourette's spoiler alert you don't find out till the end but it's one of the most beautiful representations I've ever seen of Tourette's syndrome. And so sometimes you can get given art that represents diversity and you've got to be grateful for that. But I want to be able to see actors with Tourette's, actors mm -hmm. in wheelchairs, actors that are um, gay, bisexual, everything. I want people to have those roles. So I kind of want everything. I <laughs> reckon I'm with you, Vaya. I, I think that, you know, if, if my ideal world actually existed, it wouldn't be such a bad thing for an actor to get into a wheelchair because I would be playing mm. out there playing roles. Yeah. You're, so you're the next, would, you're the next door neighbour. I yeah. would not be being denied my career simply because I'm a wheelchair no, user. Not at all. You know? mm. And so Sansi could play the role of a person in a wheelchair. Somebody else could play the role of somebody with Tourette's mm. because mm. actors who have Tourette's would also be seen yeah. on mm. screen. And on stage. For everyone to have a thing. And Carly, yeah. who's not an actor, can get parts. You don't need, you yeah. don't need an acting background. <laughs> I, you know, um, you were talking about, you know, you want, Vaya, you, you want to see representation no matter how it's done. Last year on the X-Files, um, they had, uh, and I don't watch the X-Files, but there was a big, big lot of talk in, in my ichthyosis community about it. And there was a representation of ichthyosis. I don't know whether anyone with the condition played it, ichthyosis, if no one knows probably no one knows um there's 24 types of skin conditions within this family and and i'm very red and a lot of other people with it uh, have different types of skin mm. very flaky and and sore so sorry that's in a nutshell um but the the representation of it was saying that it's you know it's a, a mutation which is true it's a genetic mutation but the language that they used and the way that they cast this person in a sort of like a viewing room it was very you know zoo animal like 
But the people in like with ichthyosis were so happy that it was you know mentioned at all whereas me coming at it from a writing diversity media background I'm really angry at how it was cast but yeah. a lot of, and, and one little girl said you know like she was 11 and I started writing something about it and then she said she's never seen this on a mainstream show before so she was really grateful for it so you know I've, I can sort of see the point but I I want if, yeah. if my condition is represented, um, I want it to be represented well because so often it's not. And that's what, often what I call out on neighbours is they bring in the gay characters, which I'm delighted for, but then they make them, they're only allowed to sort of, oh good, then there's a new gay character. That, now they can be a couple. It's like, why, mm. do, why do they have to be together just because they're the only two gay characters on the street? Mm. Yeah. Can't mm. one of them be yeah. a swing and single? Like, and so I'm Can't they not dislike one another? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's just mm. actually there's more breadth of plot available to people. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I was just thinking um, when I wrote the, my play about anorexia, I forgot my motivation. My motivation with that was because I'd always, I know that this is 20 years ago, is that everyone thought that I was doing it, that I was just making this disease up. Wow. And that was absolutely why I did it. I did it because I wanted to, because wow. you, you basically entered inside my head, I played all the voices. And that was what the outcome was, is that I wanted people to know, would you do this? Like, and people understood it because I took them through the steps. But now you would, everyone knows that no one does mental illness. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the common theme is that people know no one does that deliberately. Yeah. Mm. It's a mental illness that you can recover from. You're not the mental illness, you know, like I, because I got anorexia when I was young, it took me a long time to realize that I had it like I had, it was like diabetes. I wasn't the anorexic. It just took me a long time to push my mental illness away from me. Yeah. And it's, this, it's not the same, but it, it did take a lot of time for us to change our conversation. And a lot that. of you telling that story in the What's the Matter with Mary Jane play is that it made me look at portrayal of eating disorders differently on television. For example, when Imogen got bulimia on Neighbours, she had it for a little while. And I know that they probably referenced it once or twice after that. Like they made a point of her calling back to it. But she was on the show for three years. And in the last two years, there was never a mention yeah, of her bulimia. Yeah, progressive illness. And I knew it was... But an illness that doesn't just go away. So it, it's all just about people having a voice, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And saying it really loud. And like, yeah. I know I felt really ashamed. Like, when I walked on stage that night, I was like, I'll probably lose my friends because it was, bulimia was so gross. But I, I just kind of went, I don't really care. I, I don't, I'm in a prison here. And, and actually, um, you know, the people that leave your life because of things like that are probably. It's their stuff. You know, that's their stuff. Mm. Yeah, it's not, it really is. It's not yeah. to do with... Like you were saying earlier that you have lots of those oh. occasions where... Oh, yeah. I've had people write to me, you know, friends, and said that what I write about makes them really uncomfortable because they're <laughs> ableist. And so they... But they can't. Well, can they, you, what does ableist mean? Ableist for people that is don't? like you know discrimination against people with disabilities. So they might freely use the R word, or they might um, you know make make fun of people the way they look, or you know kind of do that ableist slur, mm -hmm. um, sort of you know talking in like a you know like someone that sounds like they have cerebral palsy sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so you know I've had that. I've had people not comfortable with me being so vocal about about things and also not comfortable with me being so vocal about disability pride like i'm really i'm i don't want a cure for my own condition i, mm. I don't want to look different i have people every day saying to me oh but surely you want a cure for that surely you want to wear some makeup to put over your face um you know is there an operation for that um yeah, it's it's a weird thing to be comfortable with me, but no one else. Is People actually ask that about Tourette's too. They go, "Have you? Isn't there a cure? Have, have you talked to your doctor lately?" Mm. I'm like, "Actually, I haven't, because this is just this is I've just, just how got it." Is. And if if there isn't a miraculous cure, I'm sure I'll get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> no. but yeah. it's such a privilege and amazing to hear you talk because mm. thank you. It, it's incredible, and you're so generous, and you're so relaxed because I get really tense because I'm so terrified of saying the wrong thing no, that I don't say anything. Oh, and I think you've got to have a go though. You know, like Kate said, you know, there are people that definitely say things with malice. Yeah, um, yeah. But I don't know. Well, you know, like the, so the other day um, I have a cleaner and now I work from home. So I'm not often there when the cleaner's there and, and they rotate. And so this one came in and I was in my pajamas first. And then I said, oh, hi, how are you? I'll, I'll just get out of your way. I'll go to the library. And she was like, <gasps> 
and anyway, like visibly shocked. And I've, you know, seen enough shock faces, of, yeah. you know, reacting to me to know. So I let that go. And then the next time I, I said to her, oh, I'm, I'm just going to be in the bedroom. If you need to vacuum, let me know, just knock on the door. And again, she turned around and, and I said, you don't have to be afraid of my face. Don't be, this is how I am. It's fine. And then, so I went to the bedroom and I was working away and then I thought, oh, I can't really smell any cleaning products. I can't any, hear anything. She'd left. She didn't lock the door. She just ran out. You're so, kidding. No, that really happened. So I was on really? the phone to the cleaning agency and, you know, I, I said, this is ridiculous. This is discrimination. The cleaning agency said, no, it's not. It's not discrimination. And I said, well, yes, it is. She didn't it's clean the place like, yeah. because she didn't feel comfortable about how I looked. So anyway, um, the, the lady from the cleaning agency got there and she said, she didn't know how to react to you. And I said, what do you mean? She could have just said hello. Like I've it's not my job to make her feel comfortable no. about me looking different and that is the relentlessly it's awful relentless thing, and people don't really. people don't get it and actually yeah. my husband was probably more annoyed that she didn't clean the house than than the way she reacted to me and the woman was downstairs because i think she had to give the key to the cleaning agent and i went to the library after that i was so pissed off by the end mm. of it and she was just standing out there i said oh, are you all right she didn't even say anything she just turned her head i was so angry and mm. it, it just it's so demoralizing to have to constantly explain and you know i just said this is how it is like yeah i was pretty abrupt with her i shouldn't have had to say oh it's fine don't be scared love you know <laughs> so i guess to to bring it back to what creators and consumers can do about diversity is a don't be a dick firstly <laughs> yeah like general rule just in Important line point um, <laughs> and but i guess we we can keep trying to talk about it and discuss it and it's amazing like i'm so grateful that like i got to just relax because i do because you, you come from privilege you know and, and you're just i've been working a lot around race for um black fella films and i was so terrified the whole time about saying something wrong and then i was like they shouldn't be the ones that have to calm me down like mm. as i would be i just didn't want to say know? the wrong thing because mm. i feel so bad about our australian history around just the genocide that whole thing mm. um but of course, it's not up to anyone. It's not up to them to. But that's what ends up happening because mm. people, white people, just freeze and go sorry. We sorry. spend a lot of time trying to make other people comfortable about our situations. Absolutely, sometimes. and Sorry. often, it, I mean, really, always, it's the things that are not said yes. that have the most power. Mm. Yeah, it's not the things that are said. So if somebody barrels in there and makes a mistake, good on them. I say, yeah, right. for having the courage to do it, and they've got and, the chance to redeem themselves, and they've got the chance then to have a conversation about it. Mm. you know like my, my cleaner can't even talk to her about it you know i said I'm, i'll give you your training no it's fine we don't need it yeah. no, that's like, shocking well, you know that's really you do need shocking it. and that's the thing like you know the, the casting agencies they need to ask us or you as actors how to behave what what you want like nothing about us without us yeah indeed yep. and maybe, nothing about us without us and maybe that's the one and maybe start looking at their internships and mm. their um traineeships and looking at how can we diversify in-house before we yeah, put all this on the screen. Um, actually, by the way, do you, is Maxine going to come back, or have we? Is that was that your stint, or are you not allowed to, or is there something? <laughs> I kind of don't really know, but I'm not going to. Okay, you know, it's no. probably not good to have a conversation okay. about that. No problem. We, we, did, we did enjoy your sass, and Carly and I, Carly and I were actually riffing on who you'd be mates with on the street. Like, yeah, I wanted you to have an affair with Paul Robinson. <laughs> Because he's got a peg leg, hasn't he? And, you know, you know, according to Vaya's theory about the gay people having to be a couple, you and Paul. I want better for Maxine That's than hilarious. Paul. He's hot. I don't, I don't think Maxine would choose Paul Robinson. <laughs> who, would you, who would you choose? What about Carl? Oh, I don't know. I don't even know. What about a younger man? Um, uh, if um, Maxine could have a menage a trois with the Brennan brothers. Oh. Um, firstly, to all of that, I say Maxine can do better. <laughs> I do too, actually. Maya. Maybe she's gay. Who yes. knows? In fact, um, yeah, I I take Suze over Carl any day. Like, yeah. But oh, I pictured her being mates with Colette Nan and getting into like mischief down the pub. Possibility, <laughs> possibility. Because I think what Carly raised when she first tuned in is that we don't just want a character like that to come in and be an immediate mouthpiece for all mm. disability issues. We want you to come in and have be yeah, a person, what, yeah. romances and conflicts and yeah, yeah. A with the Brennan brother. <laughs> no, and as I said before, I, I reckon they did really well with Elaine by making her the best person in the yeah. room the yeah. whole time, but not in a way that was patronising. She was just a really, really cool, strong. Yeah. And as I said, they really worked hard to make sure that I had the proper resources to do, to act. Yeah. Like they took it real. I can't stress enough how sensitive they were. 
but like I should have turned it down. And but it, everyone always makes the best decision that they can at that in that moment. Absolutely. And and often like I I've done extras work in the past, and I I'm Greek, and they all would often put me up for an ethnicity that wasn't Greek because I look I could pass for that ethnicity, and I was never I was I'd be like great more money for me I can be Italian I can be Middle Eastern What do you need like. Whereas now I'm more informed about that sort of thing. And mm. you just have, yeah, you go in. And, and the amends is you make by not doing it. The amends mm. I make now is like, you know, in my casting, particularly since I've learned what I have, like I'm over at Channel 10 now. And, but they're so open to it. As I said before, mm. like MasterChef was way more diverse at one stage than SBS. Effortlessly. Yeah. It really was. Yep. Mm. Yep. No, I mean, yep. the fact that, you know, we had Poe and Adam Lior and um, uh, Julie Goodwin even. You and know? A- a- Amira? Amira, Amira, she yeah. was amazing. Like yeah. it was a really accurate representation of where Australia. Mm. But that being said, also, you know, people that are economically disadvantaged aren't going on those shows either. You know yeah, what I mean? True. So that's the mm. other thing as well. But then we've got that kind of uh, poverty porn and the other, you know, yeah, spectrum, yeah. And, and that's really difficult. So we have to work on that. We do have to work on that, and I just think that you know things are changing, but. Um, we can always help them along a little bit. Yeah. Mm. I'm really excited. I'm yeah. really uplifted. I'm, I'm excited <laughs> too. I'm going to put in an application to become a writer on Nathus. Yeah, it bloody well better. Yeah, good. We'll all do it. It'll be a tumultuous journey, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, to wrap up, everyone needs to follow all your projects because they're always exciting and it would be great to see more of your work. So Carly? Yeah, I write at Carly Findlay. That's C-A-R-L-Y, F-I-N-D-L-A-Y, dot blogspot, dot com, and just Carly Findlay on the socials. Um, my personal website is katehood.net, www.katehood.net. I think that's right. And Raspberry Ripple is my theatre company and I work with able-bodied and disabled people in that theatre company. And we don't have a website yet, but we will do very shortly. You've got a Facebook page. We have a Facebook page. So go yeah. on Facebook. And Twitter as well. And Twitter. And yes. so, yeah, so when the Brits are coming to do the Neighbours tour, they can come and watch Raspberry Ripple do some production. They yeah. can. They absolutely can. They're excellent. Sansia? Um, I guess I would like to talk, I don't have any websites, but I cast First Contact 2. Both the films made that, and that is an incredibly beautiful project about Aboriginal Australia and how people have had little or no contact with Aboriginal Australians. So if you feel like watching that, it's a bloody good watch. And if you're a cat person, Sansie's cat's got an Instagram, Peter Burmese boy. (laughs) (laughs) You will not regret. You will not regret. (laughs) Fantastic. Thanks, gals. It's been a treat. There's a thousand more things we can say, but we can keep chatting. Online, Neighbours oh, wow. Neighbours yeah. Pod on Twitter, neighbourspod.com. Drop us a line. Thanks for your brilliant yeah. podcast, Faya. You're a freaking legend. I love it. This has been so enjoyable. Yeah. Such a good conversation. Excellent. Thank you. We'll get it done. We'll, get, we'll sort it all out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.